Jeffrey Bawa, the renowned Sri Lankan architect of the 20th century, saw himself being qualified as an architect only at the age of 37, after abandoning his original profession of being called to the bar. His name is synonymous with architecture and for establishing a style of tropical modernism in the island. His creations span the length and breadth of the country and some of the notable achievements were the design of the Parliament of Sri Lanka, the Sima Malakaya, office buildings, private residences and many spectacular hotel projects. In 1948, Jeffrey Bauer purchased around six hectares of rubber estate. Originally a cinnamon estate during the time of Dutch rule and then a rubber plantation under the British, this land lies just inward of the town of Benthoda. Deddua Lake and its environs is an idyllic location where the waters lie just a few kilometers inland of the sea. Bawa spent the next 50 years transforming, modifying, improving and creating on a section of land called Lunugaga, so named for the salinity of the waters during past times. Lunugaga is a wonder of invention and creativeness. But its creation and blending in with the environment is not something that happened overnight. Baba used this as his country home and experimented with various designs and concepts which make the property a unique one. The property and its creations are a culmination of decades of work from the time he first purchased it. The entrance to the central bungalow leads you through to the main house. Filled with artifacts and collectibles, the property has gifts and contributions from his lifelong acquaintances, Donald Friend, Lucky Senanaika, and including other artists and architects who grace the location. The legendary veranda and front of the bungalow overlooks the Deddua Lake and has a distinctive frangipani tree which was shaped by hanging weights on the branches. The front of the bungalow and lawn was also the setting for his famous gin and tonic sundowner. His exploration of modernism in a tropical context made him a pioneer of this architectural style. Your aesthetic journey throughout the property is sprinkled with surprises at every turn. He fueled imaginative ways to blend materials with space and light. He also used to spend many hours in an airy design space with a high roof. This location, which no doubt saw the seeds of many an idea forming, overlooks the Red Garden, so named for the colour of its soil. Bawa had many eclectic collectibles and collections. The property has several bells and gongs hung at various strategic locations. It is said that ringing one of them signaled the need for a particular item or service. The property also has over a dozen 16th century Chinese vats in which one collection is laid out in an outdoor space called the Plain of Jars. The gardens are what one can spend hours absorbing the landscape, sculptures and memorabilia collected or created over a lifetime. His efforts in some areas clearly were to mimic the European and Mediterranean style in which he grew up. Notable sections of the expansive garden are the Hindu pan, a sculpture which reflects over a pool of water, the Roman terrace, the water gardens, the black pavilion, the boardwalk which runs east-west of the property at the edge of the lake, and the water gate where he enjoyed the setting sun over the vista of the Deddua Lake. Bawa's 100th birth anniversary was commemorated by the trust which manages the property by having several art installations one located by the edge of the lake and portrays the waves of the lake. 
while another is a set of larger-than-life wind chimes. A photographic journey through the property was also captured by renowned photographers. There are five spaces available in the property to live in. All of them are spread out, experimental projects of Bawa, each with their own unique style and ambience. The main bungalow has only one guest room suite, while the other room, which was Bawa's personal space, and is close to the public. Connected to the main bungalow is also an extension above the portico, referred to as the glass room. The gallery studio suite is the living space, arguably with the most character. The studio suite opens out to the yellow courtyard, which is a terrace overlooking some of the property. The gatehouse is a bungalow just before an area called Cinnamon Hill. This connects with a passage leading into a structure called the Lucky Pavilion. Finally, there are rooms in a cottage, Cinnamon Hill Rooms 1 and 2. This section overlooks the south end of Lunugaga. Cinnamon Hill is also the area where Jeffrey Bauer is remembered with a simple gravestone. Today, one is able to experience what a moment of his life might have been in this magnificent property by renting one of the rooms. Jeffrey Bauer is known as the father of Sri Lankan architecture. He was able to capture the heritage and culture of the country with an inimitable style, which was legendary and enduring. Lunuganga is a culmination of a lifetime's work and encapsulates his creativity and brilliance, a confluence of art, architecture and installations, all creating a perfect symbiosis with the environment. <laughs>